Hello and welcome to Christian Life Center Online. Thank you so much for joining us today. As we prepare to worship together, I encourage you to take a few moments and to gather everyone in your home to make this a family experience. Secondly, to put away any distractions, anything that would keep you from focusing in on what God would want to speak to you in the next few moments. And lastly, to participate, to bring your Bible in a notebook to take notes, to sing along and to pray with us, to really engage in these next few moments to hear what God may be saying to you. And I pray that as we worship together, that the presence of God will be evident and that he would speak to you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Um, I am so missing our church family mm -hmm. right now. This is really a unique way to get together and celebrate. Um, it's really a special time, this COVID crisis, you know, masks and finances and furloughs and loss of jobs. Um, it's quite kind of an overwhelming time. Uh, it's kind of, we're living through history. This time is going through history, a lot of firsts. But I think our focus today should be on Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. I'd like to think about that and think on some of those things, not of ourselves. Um, his love for us. Pastor talked last week and we even sang about that. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we're separated right now from our church family and maybe our loved ones, maybe some friends that you usually hang out with, your Bible study um, comrades. And I'm really missing you all. And I think we have to remember that we are the church and Jesus lives in us. And we are not separated just because we're not in our church building. But, you know, nothing can separate us. None of this crisis. And um, I think we want to remember 2020 as a year of not quarantine, but a great opportunity for personal revival. Um, it's a great time to just slow down and ponder and meditate and think, think about the things of God. Um, a time to lean in and listen and question, ask questions and just treasure this time. Well, you know, too, uh, being Mother's Day, a lot of times we talk about that that's not always a joyous occasion for everyone. Why don't you share a little bit about what we've discussed on that? Yeah, I think it's true. Uh, most of you know we wanted children for a long time, and so my heart does break for uh, women that want children and have not been able to have them. Um, or if you've lost your mother, today can be a really hard day. Also in our church family, we've lost some uh, family members and our heart is grieving and breaking with you and our prayers are with you today. And I think about too, uh, people, women that have not had biological children, how important it is to have spiritual children and to be an example to those uh, people and show them the way to live as well. So. Yeah, that is so true. And I think um, the church family and the church body is a great place for that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when I have been uh, speaking out of Romans chapter 8, Paul's letter to the church at Rome, and these last few verses of this chapter just fit in really well, in my opinion, uh, mm -hmm. showing God's love for us, God being for us, not being separated from his love with what moms do for us. Uh, because John 3.16 says that God so loved, he gave. And so uh, God loved us, and then we see that example of mothers giving to their children. So I'd like to read a few verses here, uh, beginning in verse 31 of Romans 8. says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And as I read this, I think about what God uh, has done for us. I think he is for us. So who can be against us? And if God is for us, who cares who's against us? Because he is the one true and living God of the universe. So if God is for us, who can be against us? That he gave his only son for us and that he and the son freely give us all things. I mean, they give because they love. And that reminds me of mothers uh, because they're there for us as well. They're usually our number one supporters. Uh, they're living examples, as I mentioned, of God's love for his children. And they give such nice gifts to their children. That's true. Mothers are a, a great reflection of God's love. Uh, mothers are also frequently the first ones to tell their children about Jesus, who Jesus is. Uh, mothers teach us and pray for us. Uh, a lot of times your mom is the first one you call when you're in crisis and you want somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Uh, Paul goes on in verse 33 and says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. 
So we see that God does so many things for us. He, he provided a way for us to have eternal life. Uh, Jesus uh, showed us how to live by his example. He taught us how to live. Uh, and we see that God gives us eternal life and he nurtures us and helps us like uh, through this relationship. And he justifies us. It's justified, never sin. And he leads us, helps us, makes intercession for us. We talked last week about how the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. And now we see Jesus, God the Son, makes intercession for us. So we see the Trinity, two members of the Trinity, making intercession for us. And he's going to have us live with him in heaven for eternity. And so he loves us so much that he wants to put up with us for eternity. And so uh, that reminds me of what mothers do for us. And they give us life, they nurture us, they help us, they do special things for us, maybe make us our special food or make uh, very uh, special occasions for us, teach us things. Yeah, that's true. Um, I am the one that taught our children how to tie their shoes. Uh, but I, I don't remember that. Somebody else taught them to drive. I didn't want that job. <laughs> but I do love um, putting birthday parties together, doing crafty things for my children. Um, I love the parallel with God. And um, sometimes moms stand up for their children. You know, I think that's, that's important. Um, it's, it's good to know you have someone in your corner. Yeah, And I think, true. you know, I hope that most everyone had that with their mom. I hope when they think of their mother, uh, they think of their number one fan. Yes, that's true. And then Paul goes on in verses 35 and following says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so that is so comforting today when we see that Nothing can separate us from God's love. And Paul, here he goes to great length. Basically, he's racking his imagination and everything he can think of. He said, that can't do it. That can't separate us from God's love. Not tribulation, nor distress, not persecution, nor famine, nor nakedness, nor peril, nor sword, neither death, nor life, angels, principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things in the future, neither height nor depth, no created thing can separate us from the love of God. He's basically saying nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing in this universe or any universe can separate us from the love of God. And when I think about that, I think about the love of a mother as well. As God loved us and nothing can separate his love from us, you know, some people uh, feel like that God doesn't love them, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but we see God's love for us is special, just like a mother's love for us is special. We all want it, we all need it, we crave it. You know, there are stories of mothers accomplishing unusual feats out of love for their children. You know, I've read about yeah. mothers that could lift a car off of a child. You know, the, the superhuman strength comes on them, or women who have sacrificed uh, so their children don't get harmed in any way. They've sacrificed themselves. And so it just really, uh, you know, is amazing to me the, the way that a mother's love reflects God's love for us and we can't be separated from it. That's so true. I love those scriptures and they're really relevant for what's going on at this time, mm -hmm. you know. That's yeah. true. But, you know, when we're talking about not being separated from the love of God, and we're talking about being in this unusual time in history. We may have people watching today that don't feel God's love. Mm -hmm. And they may, may feel like that they've done something that's too bad for God to forgive them and love them. Uh, or they may not feel like, you know, that God loves them like he loves other people. Mm -hmm. And you may be feeling separated from God, even though Paul said nothing can separate us. Uh, you know, and because you're separated from your family, that may make you think, or your, at least your extended family, that may think, make you think that you're separated from God, and that's not true. Mm -hmm. But it's okay to ponder these things. It's okay to ask questions about these things. We see the psalmist, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes would ask questions of God. You know, 
I don't know where we, we come up with this idea, but some people uh, have, seem to have it, that if you think something, uh, but you never say it, God doesn't know. Well, that's not true because God knows all things. So if you have questions in your heart, you should ask God about them. Or it's usually a good place to go to a small group or a Bible study and ask those questions. You can ask your pastor or your pastor's wife about those things. But it's okay if you don't understand everything, if you're questioning some things, especially during this time. And so I think it's important for us to learn how to deal with that and, and try to learn some tools to try to help us to realize that's okay and God loves us anyway. Yeah, I think that's great because we don't have all the answers and you may not need the answer, you know, but sometimes you just need to ask the questions and have someone to talk to. Um, I am really missing our Bible study group. Um, if you uh, sat in there with me, you know I come up with random thoughts. Uh, it's kind of a joke, but I have a random thought. And really, they're questions, right. things that, you know, there may not be an answer to, but man, it is great to hear other people's feedback and other uh, fellow Christians' thoughts on some of the questions. Right. It helps us. Yeah. You know, and, and first of all, you realize that maybe you're not the only person who's ever asked that question or right. had that thought, yeah. and then you see uh, different perspectives, maybe something you've never thought of that someone else shares. Yeah, that's so true. Um, so pondering about pondering had me thinking about Mary. Um, and how the Bible specifically makes note of her ponderings in two specific occasions. Um, in Luke 2.19, at Christ's birth, when the shepherds appear, it says, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then a few years later, when Jesus was 12 and his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, um, Jesus went missing. And can you imagine how Mary felt um, as a mother or a parent, have you ever um, not lost your child, but thought they were with you? And even for a second, just had that feeling of panic that they weren't there. And that's a horrible feeling. I felt that. You know, but when I look at Mary and Joseph, Joseph, I'm like, you had one job and, you know, and now you've lost the Son of God uh, for three days? Come on. Yeah, that's that is hard to believe, I tell you. But, um, I can't imagine their feeling. And then when they found him, uh, the ponderings of their heart, what does this mean? His answer to them that he was about, about his father's business. Um, then the scripture says he went down with them and came to Nazareth and he was subject to them. So as I was going over this, I'm reading subject to them. Does that mean he got spankings? I, mean, well, I think that that's mean? hard to believe that the Son of God <laughs> got spankings. But yeah, right? I mean, he was subject to them. He, he right? had to mind them. Is yeah. why I was always told to be, be good yeah. and mind people. So I, right. he, he was subject to So did he get a timeout? <laughs> you know, did he have to go sit in the corner? I don't know. But Mary kept all these things in her heart. And... Um, there's that thoughtful leaning in, you know, she listened, she questioned, and even in her lack of understanding, she treasured these things. She treasured that moment. And I think we can relate to that right now with all this COVID crisis. Um, thinking a little bit more on that, you know, I, I, I love that Luke recorded that, but I wish he would have recorded a little more. Like, what did Mary and Joseph ponder on this long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem? I saw that it was 97 miles, and that was a slow 97 miles. Um, so was Mary pondering the thoughts about, wow, I'm so blessed, but oh my goodness, what are people gonna say about me? Or, you know, knowing she's going to give birth to the world's savior and what wonderful news, but trying to explain that to her fiance or maybe to her father that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit's power. Um, that must have been really difficult. And there's no doubt that Mary breathed a sign of relief when the Lord's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph and helped him believe what was unbelievable. Um, so... What do you think Joseph felt on that journey? You know, I, I was thinking about becoming a parent. There's so much planning and you make all these plans. You have this birth plan and you have all these things. You know, you got your suitcase packed and um, things may not go just how you planned. And I don't think this is what Mary and Joseph planned. I mean, what do you think were the stresses on Joseph at this time? 
Well, he, he had to be concerned, will she have the baby before we get to Bethlehem? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, will there be a place for us to stay in Bethlehem? Where will the child be born? You know, usually I think most dads are just concerned about how do I provide for my wife and my children? Yeah. And so that had to be a stressor on him, I would think. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting to think about that. Um, I was started thinking about the later years, too, since our kids are older and, you know, um, when Mary's boys, she had other children, when they went out to play in the hay and they came back in the house and they had the smell, I know it's funny, but random thought, they had the smell of the barn and the animals on there. Did she ponder and remember the manger that he was born in? Or maybe when she went with her husband to the temple um, to offer sacrifice and they saw the sheep in the outer courts, did she remember the shepherds who worshiped him Did that come to mind and did she ponder those things? Um, When the moon was full and the stars were at the brightest, did her mind go back to that brightest star she saw on the night of his birth? well, you're, you're having more spiritual thoughts than I'm having because I'm thinking, did she look at his room and say, clean this up? Were you born in a barn? <laughs> of course. Yeah, was his music too loud? Or I've heard a lot of people say, you need a haircut. I've told my son that quite a few times in the last few weeks, but um, we've let it grow. <laughs> um, but I don't think I ever thought so much about Mary's pondering. This is when I went to see the movie, The Passion. And there were scenes in that movie, Mary was kind of in the background and Jesus was carrying the cross through the streets and people were spitting on him and, um, you know, the mockery and the pain he was going through. I, I felt um, as a mother heartache mm-hmm. when you saw, when Mary saw her child suffering. And um, I know when my children are suffering that I can hold on to the hope of the resurrection and I think it's really something to think about Mary seeing firsthand the passion, but also firsthand the resurrection of her son. Um, did she know that that reunion would be short lived? You know, I had thoughts about that. Um, did she know she would have to let him go again? And I think she learned very shortly that was true. Um, sometimes we face some things with our children. Um, they're very small in comparison, but about letting go. And um, my whole family knows that I am a keeper. Um, my garage is full of things that I hold on to um, because there's memories attached. And um, just last week, still these two boxes are in the house Zachary brought to me, and they had little trophies and the little uh, cars, the what do you call oh, them? Like Pinewood Derby Pinewood cars. Derby cars that he had made. And I can still remember the great race and how we were all there, you know. And um, it was just such excitement and wonderful memories that I just want to hold on to. And my kids know that. They won't throw anything. They're, they're not keepers. They don't want to be like mom and have a garage full of stuff. But they know I want to hold on to those memories. And so they come, they bring it to me. They pile it up in my room and say, hey, I don't want this anymore, but, you know, do with it whatever you want. So (laughs) it's kind of funny. But I think through this, Mary is teaching um, me that there are times that we have to let things go. And over time, we have to let things go and let our children grow up so they can become who they're meant to be. So Mary teaches me to trust that my children will find their way um, and they'll find and embrace the love of God and the will of God. And I think you can kind of compare that to when your plans change and life throws you some expected times, such as right now. I'm really missing my church family. Um, On the very unimportant end, I'm missing some of my favorite stores, my hairdresser. Um, Anybody missing TJ Maxx besides me? No, I'm good on that one. (laughs) Yeah, I figured. but maybe much worse, maybe you've lost your job. I have friends and coworkers that are on furlough. You may have lost your income. Um, you may be sick, or even worse than that, you may have lost a dear loved one. And I know many of our church family have lost somebody. Um, so we're praying for you. And I want you to think about how do you react to these life crises? 
Um, do you become thoughtful when your emotions wash over you? Do you ponder and hold these things in your heart, knowing and trusting God is in control? Even when we don't have the answers, we can do that. Um, it's not always my personal first go-to, um, but sometimes I go back and look at things and I look how God has used circumstances in my life. And I was thinking about that and something I'm pondering now frequently is our daughter had a car accident in November and it happened to be on my route to work. So every day when I drive through that route, I'm pondering and thinking about this and wondering why um, but this overwhelming love just washes over me and um, I'm just reminded how much God loves us, how he took care of her, he, he took care of the man that she hit. Um, his grace and protection is so powerful and um, it's, it reminds me in the Old Testament how they put up rocks of remembrance and to remember what God's done for us I think is so important. Um, and you, uh, you reminded me even when you were talking about that last week, I was talking about how all things work together for good. And so how God takes those unexpected events and brings good out of them. And so some of them, we're still looking for what the good will be. And some of them, we can look back and see what God has brought out of it and, and use for good. That's so true. And, and so many things, we don't know the why, but we do place our trust in the Lord. And it's a beautiful place to be in to grow in the Lord. Um, let him bring new, possibly scary, potentially overwhelming things your way, but respond with a thoughtful comp contemplation rather than um, some emotion. And um, I think mothers do this a lot. Do you look at your children sometimes and you, you think, you know, you just look at them and think, wow, what's what's going on in their hearts and you wonder what their frustrations are what do they need from you dads too feel that um and right now our little precious image bearers of jesus are running around at our homes more than ever creating chaos and noise it doesn't matter how old they are um, but also joy and hope and delight um, so which side do you see more often and it's like looking at your circumstances. What side do I see more often and which do you? So I, I've thought about these four action steps because Randall likes to put action steps on the screen. So um, in honor of the practice of pondering, number one, slow down. That is really hard to do. We are forced to slow down right now. Um, and it's one of the first ways to implement this practice of pondering. Um, I like to walk down to my pond. I don't think anybody in my family enjoys these koi fish as much as I do, but it, <laughs> it's a quiet place where I can pray. And um, I just love God's creation and seeing animals. So um, breathe, pause, and just slow down. Um, we're not made to run from one errand to the other. The other thing that also speaks to me, and you can look around, I think it might speak to everybody, is in, in stop escaping. And you may not see yourself as escaping. Um, we used to talk about we would go to the movies to kind of escape, and you know, you forget whatever your problem is for a long time, but instead of escaping from the hustle, retreat to a place of pondering. Rather than scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest to give yourself a moment of hard-earned peace, consider just stopping. Just stopping, breathe, thank God for some of the blessings he's given you. Remind your mind and heart just how much you love motherhood and you love your creator. Number three is journal. And that might be hard for some of you. Um, I've been listening to my friend. She does a coffee with Carla once a week and um, really short devotions. But one of the ones she talked about was journaling. And I love that. Um, each day, write down three things that you're grateful for. And you can do this in your Bible. You can get a journal. Uh, you can get a scrap of paper. And I was thinking, you know, I'm at work and we wear these sterile hospital gowns and there's this little cardboard tag and I'll pull that off and put it in my pocket and write stuff on it, make little notes and um, <laughs> they accumulate here and there. But um, it's just a little note to thank God for what he's been doing. Um, 
And it's not so much that you have to have a special place to write it in. Um, if you are interested in scrapbooking, though, I have a garage full of craft items that I'm happy to share more than I could use in my lifetime. <laughs> more um, supplies than I've seen in some scrapbooking stores. It is even. true. It's true. Um, but more importantly is that you've taken the moment to write it down. So gratitude focuses your heart and soul on what matters. And there's actually some scriptures that go along with that. Psalm 105.5, remember the wonders of the Lord and what he has done. So how do you remember things without writing them down? Right. I mean, some people have that talent, but we're taught in school to write things down, take notes so you remember them. Um, Exodus 17, 14, God said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered. Okay, so we have to write it down. Jeremiah 32, write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. And Isaiah 38, 9, it's the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery. So write down what you've been through. Maybe you've been through an illness and recovery. Maybe you've lived through a miracle. Um, I love when Nancy Kahn shared her story with our church family. She wrote it down. And um, being a nurse, I know what a true miracle her healing was. Um, the nurses that were there didn't think she was going to make it. So I am so blessed just remembering that. Um, so when you write things down, write whatever you're feeling. If you're feeling frustration, anger, aggravation, write those down. Uncertainty. Um, and then pray about it. And I believe the Holy Spirit will bring you comfort. Um, when you look back and ponder the year of 2020, you'll see God's hand in everything that he's done. Um, and then number four is ponder or contemplate stop and think about things like mary think about all the things think about the wonder of god's creation um just your children's giggles i love to hear zachary watching winnie the pooh he would just laugh out loud he was so cute um, and it just brought joy to my heart um, but you were made to live a joy-filled purpose you weren't made to rush from one task to another never stopping to breathe um, so many times on that little piece of paper I was talking about, I'm writing notes or lists of things to do. So I am going to purposely every day write three things that I'm thankful for and get a different mindset about it. Um, God wants your heart as a mother to be to your children. Um, he wants you to delight in them the same way he delights in you. So pause, breathe, and ponder. Um, it'll bring you more joy. And I think, you know, pondering to me is not just on the heavenly things, but it's very much about prayer and things that you want to communicate. So, you know, sometimes you, we just don't take the time um, to stop and know that he is God. Listen to God. Listen. Um, sometimes we have problems. We have sins. We can't seem to stop committing um, sometimes we have theological questions. This recently, um, one of our church members sent us a, a text asking, um, now you're going to have to preach a sermon about it because I'm bringing it up, but she was asking. Not today. <laughs> okay, not today, not Mother's Day, but she was asking um, when Jesus was in the grave, what was going on and what scripture you know, is there about that answer? And I think that is um, really great that she brought that up and wasn't afraid to ask. Um, so sometimes we don't have the answers, but all the instances can benefit from the simple act of pondering. Pray, tell God the truth, give him your problem, your sin, your question that you can't figure out, and then go about your business, your duty of the moment, being a mom or a dad, and be open to the answer, and God will give you the answer in his perfect timing. It's not our timing, but it is his. Um, some answers come really quickly. Some may be revealed in a few days. Um, maybe some when you finally let it go and give it to God. Some you may not ever get an answer to or it may take years. Um, but we, we learn to give it to God and let it go. And knowing that God can handle the situation. No, nothing can separate us from God. Nothing in the year 2020 or any other year can separate us from the love of God. That's right. That's very true. 
So do you want to pray for us today as we close? I feel like you've given us uh, a lot of things to ponder and you've given us some tools as to, to help us to ponder and to realize how good God is, what he does for us, that he helps us so much, that he uh, you know, works for our behalf, on our behalf, he works for us, he helps us, and we can't be separated from his love, and mothers are such great examples of that. And so you're a great mother. Would you pray thank for you. us at the end of this uh, service today? God, we just thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us, Lord. You are almighty, and we praise your name. Lord, I am so privileged to sit here, and um, I pray these words are reaching our church family, yes. Lord. I pray that whoever needs to hear them today fills your love and your goodness, God. Um, whatever crisis they're going through, Lord, whether it be small or large, however they're feeling, God, I pray they share their feelings with you, and your Holy Spirit, our comforter, comes to them right now. Um, in their home as they're watching, Lord, and ministers to them and touches them. God, I pray a special blessing on the mothers, those that want to be mothers, those that have lost their mothers, any that are grieving today for the loss of family or mothers. God, I pray a special touch. Holy Spirit, minister through our church family today. And God, we celebrate you and celebrate the life you've given us, all the good gifts you're giving us. And Lord, bring to our remembrance that none of our troubles can ever separate us from you. We rejoice that you live in us today, God. And um, just go with us as we go throughout this time in history, Lord, and bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as always, we look forward to seeing you face to face. But until then, we'll see you online. Amen. I'm excited to see you again. Amen. <laughs>
Once again, thank you for joining with us today. If God uses time to speak to you, to encourage you, or to challenge you, I invite you to leave a comment below. We would love the opportunity to connect with you, to pray with you, and to celebrate the good things that God is doing in your life. To learn more about Christian Life Center, visit our website at myclc.life, or you can like and follow us on Facebook. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today, and God bless.